Hi, this is Rick again. Okay, in this third video, I'm going to show how each of the components were used or built in the last two videos. Uh, first video, if you remember, hopefully you watched it, was uh, Burial at Sea. Um, in that video, we had a number of things that took place uh, sequentially. Firstly, we had a flag that came down to half-mast. We then had people standing to attention. We had a guy calling out commands. We then had everyone salute. After the salute, these guys fired three rounds uh, each. And then uh, I use an add action to lower this body into the, well, to drop that body down this slope and into the water. So first thing, let's have a look at the flagpole. The flagpole, uh, if you remember when you watched the video, had three add actions on it, lower, um, half mast, and raise. So let's have a look at the scripts. All right, so these are the three add actions. You'll notice that they all run the same script, except the only difference is the uh, variable that's passed to the script. And in the first case, uh, lower the flag, it passes a value 1, half mast, a 0 0.5, and raise the flag is 0. These numbers represent the, the starting phase of the flag. Um, so, in other words, if a flag was fully raised, it will be 1 in terms of the flag current animation phase. So... Um, since we're raising the flag, we'll set the flag uh, case to zero. Now this case, uh, the switch do construct is very useful in this particular case where we're selecting three different potential alternatives or outcomes depending on the uh, variable that's passed to the script from the script. So it picks uh, the name of the flag, pole, or the object that, the f that these add actions are attached to, up by this select zero it then picks up the phase of the uh, uh, the phase required uh, as I said from these three numbers the last three numbers are the sequence that these add actions will appear in hierarchy on the actual object so on the flagpole this will always be at the top and that will be the next one down and that will be the following one okay so there's three states there's case zero case 0 0.5 and case 1. So in the case 0, uh, we don't really know whether the flag is currently halfway up the pole or at the top or at the bottom. Um, we need to first find out what the flag animation phase is and we do this in each case. And we store that current phase in, in a variable, local variable current phase. And the flag, as, we, as I said earlier, is the actual flagpole itself. So it checks on the flag pass, says what's the current animation phase, and it stores it in that variable. So in that value, because the flag animation phase can either be uh, zero if it's at the bottom, one if it's at the top, or anything in between. The fact is that if you analyze the numbers that are rendered or that are returned from flag animation phase, you find out that it's not exactly one, zero and it's not exactly one at the top. It's uh, 0 0.001 something at the bottom and 0 0.9995 or something at the top. So you might wonder why I'm using current phase greater than 0 0.99 or current phase less than equal to 0 0.1. And that's the reason. It's that it's not actually getting to 1 exactly on the dot and it doesn't get to 0 exactly either. Okay, so in the case that we want to raise the flag up the flagpole, it checks to see where the flag current animation phase is, and then it says, uh, and then it runs a loop from the current phase to one step 0 0.05. So it's going to step very, very small increments going up the pole, and it will repeat that process. It increases because this value is increasing by a very small amount each time. And it sleeps just for a very, very short period of time so that it looks very smooth the way the flag moves up the pole. So if the flag, let's say the current animation phase was zero, well, that's simple. It goes from zero to one. If this is 0 0.5, well, it will go from 0 0.5 to one. And obviously, if it's one, it's not going to really do anything. 
same thing with the half half state let's say you want to bring the flag to half mast we don't really know whether the flag is at the bottom of the pole at the top of the pole or whether it's in the middle of the pole but we can find out so we find out where it is and then we check the two particular possibilities one is that the flag is uh, currently at the top of the flagpole and the other is that the flag is at the bottom of the flagpole can't be anywhere else because we only have we don't have an option to stop the flag. It either moves to the full distance from bottom to middle or middle to top or from bottom to top. Okay, so we've got two possible outcomes. One is that the current phase is the bottom of the flagpole and the other is that it's at the top of the flagpole. In either case, it's got to move to the middle of the flagpole. So we know that we're going to be moving to uh, the, the maximum value will be 0 0.5. Now we either move from 1 to 0 0.5 with a negative step or we move from 0 to 0 0.5 with a positive step. And the same thing happens with the down process uh, where case is equal to 1. Uh, so when, it, when the add action, when you run this add action, this add action is going to be processed by the switch do construct. It's going to see, okay, one, I'm looking for one, case zero, no, that's not it. Case one, yeah, I'll do this bit. So in this case, this add action, as it says, lower the flag. It's going to run this down routine. Okay, so again, it gets the current animation phase, checks to see where the current flag, current position of the flag is. If the flag is already at the bottom, it's not going to do anything. If the flag is uh, at the top, well then it's going to go from essentially 1 or 0 0.099 something or other down to 0, stepping at minus 0 0.5, It sits and moves the flag down and then it stops. So that's simply how the little animation script works. I'll post these scripts into the Dropbox link. Um, okay, the next sequence is going to be, um, if you remember rightly, I was, I started the in memoriam service uh, using this little add action on the info stand. So now this add action is quite a complex add action, and I'm not going to go through. I'm not going to go through all of this uh, on the add action because it'll be impossible to follow. So I've copied that out as a as a script. So the add action that's on the uh, stand in memoriam, uh, when you run this add action, it um, sleeps for three seconds, then the stand plays a sound burial uh, in three-dimensional sound, so anyone standing nearby would, would hear the sound and attenuation. Um, it then automatically moves the flag to half mast depending on where the flag currently is, as per the previous script, except this is an automated process. And then the next thing is we need to bring everyone to attention. If you remember, if you watch that video, you'll remember they all click their heels and so on. Now, there is no animation in Armour 3 to standard attention. However, there is an animation that has a part of that process in it. And I'll show you that now. I can find it. Okay. All right, so there's a static salute that lasts for zero seconds. And it will, and he will stay like that forever. And there's another one where, if you look closely at this, he stands to attention at the beginning of the animation. Okay, that's quite useful. So we need to get everyone to stand at attention now. You can notice that if you notice, there's a, there's actually quite a lot of guys here. So what I've done is I've grouped these soldiers into batches. So this is that's one group. There's another group, another group, another group. So there's basically five groups of three. 
and then we have another five groups of three and then we've got one group over here and these guys are all grouped to this guy to keep them staying where they are they've got to disable AI move on all of them the last thing you want them to do is start wandering off during the ceremony because apart from that being kind of rude to the guy who just died um, you really want them to kind of look like they're at attention and they're basically being controlled by this guy over here these guys are in a different animation with a gun on their back to start off with and these guys are all standing at ease so the first thing that we need to do is we need to put this into the non-scheduled environment so each one of the groups um, they play this animation that I just showed you but this but it they only plays it for the first point two of a second and then switches off the simulation on all of the objects so that they stop playing the balance in other words we don't want them to salute we just want them to bring their legs together so they look like they're standing to attention this is all very time dependent stuff and you'll notice that there's a there are a couple of slight adjustments in timing just to try and make them look a little bit less like robots because you don't want it to be completely well too perfect so now they're currently standing at attention and there's a seven second sleep while the sound overlay takes place and then at a certain point he tells them to salute and again we spawn this we then enable the simulation and we play the salute animation which is a static animation and we use play move now because I think play move is its effects are global I think yeah effects are global so we don't have to uh, remote exec this all right so next thing we've got so they will stand at this attention and they're now saluting then there's a 50.5 second delay while the sound file continues and then at the end of that sound file the master in charge basically says uh, salute off and they all stop saluting I use a play action on this because that's the simplest method to to uh, kill this static state then after three seconds um, they are they go into the fire at target um, sequence now where the master of arms basically tells them to take aim fire take aim fire and so on and I'll go into that now this also adds a um, an add action to the to the info stand and or sorry the, there is an add action added to the info stand as well as this add action so this is one long add action and then this is another I could have just put this all into one script but um, I just post copy and pasted it anyway uh, it is now a script so it can be used uh, it obviously requires some tweaking but anyway so let's look at the fire at target now this is particularly difficult to get three AI or any number of AI to fire at a specific object in the sky reliably it is extremely difficult uh, even if I set an invisible object in the sky here and try and get them to fire at it, it doesn't work reliably and this has to be perfectly synchronized these guys all have to do it exactly at the same time and they all need to aim at the same height and so on uh, if you try any other method it still doesn't look great so the best way I could do it was to actually fudge the whole process so uh, they actually don't fire any guns they all they're doing is playing animation so um, it's a bit of a crook but it's the only way I could get it to work um, so we have three gunners okay um, that little script is what's run via the previous script or the add action so the first thing it does is they lower their guns then it sleeps for two seconds and then it runs this little loop where they essentially lower their gun there's a sound of them loading uh, a, a, a bullet into the chamber and then there's a 2.6 seconds they look up aim into the sky and then fire 
and that's repeated. Notice the timing here is like very precise. So uh, um, uh, it needs to be that because it's it's synchronized with the sound, and to getting the, to get the sound and the timing sequencing right, tedious process. Um, so then once it's completed this little loop, they are put into a safe behavior for, for each of the three gunners. And then uh, they're put into the same state with their, with their gun on their back. So when they start off, the gun is on their back. This one brings low, puts the gun, takes the gun off their back and they point downwards. Um, and then when they complete this, they put the gun back onto their back. So that's how the fire at target process was, was done. And finally, um, the thing that was really, really tricky was to move, um, <laughs> to move this dead body down this ramp and let it fall in the water. Um, you'd think that that wouldn't be too difficult. I would have liked to have put an American flag on this, but there is no way of retexturing this object, which is a big pity. Um, so then I thought of attaching American flag to it, but that didn't work either. So uh, not too well anyway, but uh, so I decided to just wrap this whole area with American flags. So there's a banner and I set an object texture on this uh, on each of these banners. Um, so it kind of looks okay. And then this object has got to slide down. And it's quite a tricky process because you've got to keep the angle exactly right. Otherwise it falls through the bottom here or it doesn't slide properly so it doesn't look realistic because you really want it to look as though gravity is sort of basically drawing it down and when it gets to the end of this ramp it's got to then obviously fall down and it's got to rotate and face the sea and then it's got to accelerate under gravity until it hits the water and then it's going to make a sound so even though something as simple as moving the body down a ramp sound it sounds ridiculously easy it's actually quite tricky so in this case there's an ad action which i've got on my stand info stand uh, so once all of the rest of the processes, when the gun, the, the nine gun salute's been done or completed, then I run this uh, add action separately. Um, so in this case, uh, the body is picked up from uh, the object because uh, this add action is on the info stand. So obviously you're not going to bury the info stand. So I need to pick up an object from, from this and passes this object under the select three from the add action. So body one is the name of this dude here, body one. Okay, so it then um, says, okay, we'll give it a local variable. So now we're referring to this object with that variable. And then enable simula simulation false. So the, the simulation on, on the body object is, is off. So it will essentially I can move it now without it without having to worry about some sort of physics or anything like that. Okay, so then the first thing the first the two the three phases basically. The first phase is to move it down here, second phase is to well, part of the second phase is to rotate it, and, the th and then the rest of the second phase is to drop it into the water. Uh, and and to do that reliably and, and realistically is quite tricky. So I calculated that we need from we need 65 steps, um, 65 different different movements to get it to there, and basically we get a, an x, y, and a z coordinate or current position for the body, and then what we do is we we just simply um, set pose. We move this object down, um, and you notice that the the z I adjust the X um, position and I adjust the Z position as it moves and I'll give it a very small uh, delay in time. And the reason for that is so that um, uh, it looks smooth the way it moves down the ramp. And it's going to be reasonably consistent speed because it's on a standard incline and the it will accelerate marginally but there's a lot of friction here so we assume it will move reasonably consistently. Okay, so then... Uh, it starts the. It already starts the the. Well, it sleeps. It runs us in a in a non-scheduled environment. Sleeps for two seconds, and it plays the sound fall in water. And the reason it does that now is because I know that this can take about two seconds. 
after this, after the after the body gets to the end of the ramp, it's going to take two seconds to fall, to rotate and fall. All right, so then we've got the, um, we need to set vector up, x, y, and z, and we need to adjust the rotation. The body needs to actually turn um, and turn down towards the water and fall. Okay, so after fiddling for quite a while, I managed to get the vector up, um, uh, set vector up, and set the and set the body position in such a way that it falls in a in a reasonably natural way. And then uh, once the the noise has happened when it's fallen in the water, then and it falls far enough, obviously, because this controls the the distance that it's going to ultimately fall. Then uh, sleeps for three seconds. The officer which is this dude over here. He says, dismissed, and then uh, sleeps for two seconds, and then it runs the next script, which basically dismisses this entire group. Okay, so now dismissing such a large group of people is uh, at best a difficult process, um, simply because you want them to all walk, and, and not only that, there, there is no pathfinding on the top of an aircraft carrier. So if you've got an AI in here and you give him move statements, probably the first thing he'll do is turn around and walk off the side of the carrier, which is it's not really ideal, and it doesn't really make for a good mission. So um, the, the next question is, what are you, how do you get all of these dudes to walk along the aircraft carrier down here, walk all the way down here without falling off the aircraft carrier, making them stay together and make them go into the island and then disappear. So that's the problem that you need to solve. And the kind of the only way I was able to do that, and I think it could probably be a bit better, um, but I'm not prepared to waste another week doing something which could be tweaked quite easily by anyone. So you have multiple groups. Okay, each one of these, is, you, as you notice, this is Officer 2, this guy here is, is Officer 1, so these guys belong to him. Officer 2, these guys, these guys all belong to, to him, and so on. So each of these front guys are, num are named Officer 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, to up to 11, okay? This is Officer 1. So we need, so we've got 11 groups of three, uh, well, we've got 10 groups of three and one group of, uh, what have we got here, two, four, six. Okay, so we're gonna move all of those guys down to the end. So now the way to do that is to, if you notice that they all start off with uh, disable AI move. Um, this one uh, has animation switched off, these three. And this guy's got a disable move, move, and all of these guys have got disable AI move. Okay, so first thing is um, we're gonna we're gonna have to put these all into unscheduled environment because we essentially want to run the, run them all at the same time with a slight slight adjustment in time. So um, you notice that there are basically eleven in reverse. 11 subroutines and the first one is um, for officer 11 so really remember watching the video this guy says dismissed and then these three guys turn around so that one turns around that one turns around that one turns around they return turn around almost instantaneously and they then march off to there and then they march off to there and then they march off into there so there's three essentially three waypoints well four, four processes turn around move there, move there, move there, get deleted. And that happens for each, each one of these groups. So now the movement process, firstly we give them specific uh, uh, vectors, direction vectors. So we set, set the variable X, magic variable, for each of the units within, of, within group officer 11. And we set the direction to 70. Um, and and then we say, okay, go for for 25 seconds, walk in that direction and play this move. So he plays an animation. So it doesn't actually, um, his, his, his animation state is, is switched on, but he, um, 
remember he's in a disable AI move state so he's not able to move other than by me telling him exactly what to do so I give him a play move which is a, a global instruction so these guys are playing an animation of walking and that animation is consistent and and it's played on all these guys within this group so their their instruction is um, for 25 seconds in this direction move this play that animation then for then change of direction 355 is heading down the runway uh, towards the island for 77 seconds in the direction then set the direction to 270 which is kind of due west uh, for 15 seconds you move into that and then you get deleted so it repeats this process for every single one of the groups and um, obviously I could tweak it very slightly at the end where they move in and get deleted because to get them to actually all move through the door uh, is not easy um, simply because remember when they're walking the timing sequencing needs to be probably adjusted slightly so instead of them walking abreast when they walk down the down the runway you could have them walking behind each other because you've got to get them into the door so this last sequence over here you would have to put in a, a slight timing delay between each of the sequential units in the group but anyway um, so that's how the dismissed process works um, I'm not sure if there was anything else the burial dismissed no that was basically all those are all the scripts for the first um, for the first video okay so I want to just quickly show you how the the burial uh, process worked because I actually didn't it wasn't very visible from the previous video because uh, there's a number of people standing over there in front of it so I'm going to release the body and then I'm going to quickly bring up the camera and move over here um, rid of that okay, you can see that it works reasonably well could be slightly smoother okay so now he's in, he's dismissing all the guys you can see when they turn they will turn a little too quickly there might be some transitional animation I could use but anyway it's it's really just a, it's to illustrate a process more than than uh, something specific uh, if you wanted to use that process um, especially for cutscenes on a on an aircraft carrier it's useful because you can control exactly where they move and how they move uh, you just obviously have to find the right animation All right well thank you for watching and um, I'm actually gonna create another video now to show the LHD recovery process because um, otherwise this video would be too long so uh, yeah thanks for watching and please subscribe Cheers.